Good morning and welcome to Canterbury for this Group A match in World Cup 99 between England and Kenya. Good news, the game will start in a little under five minutes time. Another thrilling encounter in World Cup 99. So it's, uh, it's confirmation of uh, the two teams. As I said, Croft for Hollyoak in the England team. And uh, Mohamed Sheik comes in uh, for Commande in uh, the Kenyan team. Well, Alec, you've won the toss. Uh, an important decision? Um, yeah, we're going to have a bowl. Uh, it's been obviously damp this morning. The wicket is pretty dry, but if there's any moisture around, I think it'll be first thing, and hopefully we can exploit the conditions. It looks a pretty good wicket here, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Generally, they're very good wickets here at Canterbury. We played Kent on a similar wicket, just one or two strips away, and that played well, and I'm sure this will be exactly the same. And news of the team, there's been a change. Yeah, there's one change. Adam Hollyoak goes out, Robert Croft comes in, Graham Hick wasn't uh, fit to bowl, so for the variation, Robert comes in. OK, well, good luck to you, Alec, on your side. Thanks Thank very you. much. Cheers, Bill. Asif. Uh, disappointed about losing the toss? Well, I would have liked to have uh, bowled also, but the wicket looks quite good and uh, we're hoping to put up a good score now. Do you have a, a total in mind as to what you want to achieve? Well, we'd like to bat 50 overs. Uh, that's very important in one-day cricket and uh, we can uh, pose as many runs as possible. And who have we got to look out for? Uh, are you going to get some runs today? Well, I hope so. I'll <laughs> continue with my run, run that I'm getting. OK, well, good luck today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. Darren Goff will open the bowling for England from the Nackington Road end, and here he is. Kenya ah! away with a leg bite. It's all the uh, bowlers from the Nackington Road end. Uh, the first thing they're going to have to do is adjust to that slope. It's quite a big slope, and uh, the ball is going to move a lot towards leg stump so there's an adjustment got to be made there and by KT Francis uh, of Sri Lanka at that end edged and gone comfortably taken by Graham Thorpe and Austin gets the breakthrough Oceano out for naught and it's just the start that England wanted it was a bit of a nothing shot it was short enough to square cut, but he sort of uh, was half a cut shot and half a forcing shot off the back foot. And all he succeeded in doing was giving Graham Thorpe some uh, catching practice. So uh, they've lost their first wicket with seven on the board. All gone. Finished of edges. Oh, not out. Well, Rudy Kurtzen is... Uh, the man in charge, he says not out. All the England team uh, were convinced there was a thin edge there. It was a bit of a lazy shot there from uh, Tikola. He really didn't move the feet too much after the ball was delivered, just waved the bat at it. The England players were all quite convinced there was an edge there. Steve Ticolo off the mark after that uh, appeal for a catch behind. Just one off the over. Kenya 11 for one. Super shot on the up. That'll go for four. No point chasing that. No point uh, running for it if you're the batsman. First boundary of the innings. Kenya 18 for one. Yeah. Short. And uh, that'll run away down the hill, even though there's been a lot of rain, that'll go for four. Good stroke from uh, Steve Ticolo. Seems very, very strong on the back foot, Steve Ticolo. Placed it well. Just in front of Square. That's a Hussein who is so brilliant at backward point. Made sure he hit it forward of him. Three. 
better from Ian Austin. He'll be uh, very annoyed at that first ball. Giving uh, Tocolo width to get the ball away on the offside. Done it again with uh, even more power. Explosive stroke from uh, Steve Ticolo. And this one was even shorter. Did a bit when it hit the deck. Gave him even more room to play that through the offside. Down the track. In the air, over the top. But, uh, quite beautifully played. Good stuff from Robert Croft. I think the third umpire might be asked to have a look at that, though. Maybe he's not. It's 38 for one. Third umpire is being asked to have a look at uh, that piece of fielding from Robert Croft. But, um, from that angle, it's not very easy to tell. You get more of an idea from this. Well, that's four. Those feet are on the boundary rope. As uh, Robert Croft is in contact with the ball. And there's the signal. So the batsman will change ends. One more will be added to the score. 39 for one now. Valiant effort from uh, Robert Croft. And to be fair to him, he wouldn't have known that uh, his feet were in contact with the rope at the same time as his hand touched the ball. to leg stump good shot that really is a good stroke it's the second off drive that Ticolo's played and they've both been uh, executed quite perfectly he has looked very good on the offside Ticolo I was just making the point that perhaps Alan Mulally had recognised that he was good on the offside and wanted to keep the ball as close to his body as possible. That wasn't a particularly bad delivery though. Brings up the 50 in the 17th uh, over. That's a good shot. Too short from Mullally. Hasn't been uh, anywhere near as destructive as he was at Lords. It's 57 for one. Just dragging this one down. It's not that short. This wicket doesn't have much pace in it, though. It tends to sit up and beg to be hit. That's exactly what Shah's done. Onto it very quickly. Oh, it's beaten Goff. Sorry, uh, Croft. He didn't get a very good bounce there. And it's going to cost England four. <laughs> 72 for one. That's a good shot. Just drifted onto the pads, and the batsmen really showing their intentions. That's a good shot. Steve Ticola there, just waiting. He's been quite patient. He's been tied down the last couple of overs. Some good bowling. This one just drifting into the legs. 
fact, it was straight than I thought originally. Good, clean strike over the wicket. Well, that's beautifully struck. Just bouncing short of the rope. And uh, Ian Botham has gone out of the commentary position. I've been joined by Michael Holding. Well, Stephen Ticola is really batting very, very well. Started off playing most of his scoring strokes through the offside. Well, that's just to show that he can play on the onside as well. That was beautifully struck. Ian Austin uh, back into the attack. He opened the bowling. And got the breakthrough. So there's uh, 50 for Steve Ticola. Very well played with uh, seven boundaries. Very good knock by the young man. Very, very good knock. A shot. Just timed well enough to clear mid off. That brings up the 100. This is a very good platform. Excellent platform and a very good shot by Shah. Robin Lu Shah getting into the attack now. Beautifully timed, just lofted it over the man at mid off. Once it cleared him, he knew it was going to be four. Oh, that's a good shot, beautiful timing again, and the placement has really picked up as this innings has progressed. 106 for one. Stewart. So Darren Goff has done what uh, the captain wanted. He's got the breakthrough. Just what the doctor ordered. Very good knock by Robin, Robin Dushado. Just as when he was looking to really accelerate the scoring rate. An excellent delivery. Just coming back down the hill. Inside edge and Alex Stewart taking a very good catch. You won't be too disappointed with those 46 runs, though. It's 107 for two. Oh, beautifully bowled. Yes, I think that might have been the result of a couple of those short pitch deliveries. And then the perfect uh, delivery pitched up by Darren Goff. Well pitched up and slanting in as well. Finding the gap between bat and pad. Or is number just a bit late in coming across. That was well bowled. That left leg didn't come very far forward either. That's his 100th one day international wicket. Darren Goff, it's 115 for three. Top score of 96 in the World Cup. That was against uh, Sri Lanka. Made his debut in Kazakh. Oh, oh that's a lovely shot. It's only going to bounce a couple of times before it crosses the rope. Right. Excellent response there from Steve DiColo. It's 123 for three. All kinds of trouble here. The yeah! uh, direct hit. Well, that was suicidal. There's no other way of describing it. There was never a run there. It went straight to Neil Fairbrother. And you probably picked one of the best fielders in the England side. Super cricket all round from England. It was a good ball from uh, Robert Croft. The arm ball. Bowled with uh, a bit of extra effort. Hit the inside edge. And went between Modi's legs. And Neil Fairbrother has just been positioned there at uh, short fine leg. Once he gets the ball, you're going to be in trouble as a batsman. And uh, they'd only just crossed. Don't think they'd need the third umpire for that one. No, Modi's gone for five. It's 130 for four. Yeah. 
It's in the air, over mid on. Super shot. You're going to hit, hit straight. Good way for Alpesh Varda to get off the mark. Very positive way to start your uh, total running. He's waited for it and hoisted it. No! Oh, Baldy. Quicker ball. And Varda has gone for six. That's good bowling from uh, Robert Croft. Well, I think it's safe to say that Alpesh Varda favours the onside. Very quick to get his front leg over. On this occasion, he gets too far over. This is a pretty straight ball, and that's hit middle and leg, middle, and I have to say, uh, totally and comprehensively beaten. Alpesh Varda's gone for six. It's 142 for five. Fifty comes up for Kenya in the fortieth over. And that's uh, going to be the end. Darren Goff sitting underneath it. And the change of pace there from Mark Eland has brought the end to Steve Tocolo's innings. It's been a good one, but I don't think it's enough for Kenya. Very, very good knock by Steve Tocolo. He wanted to stay there a bit longer though. Slight change of pace, that's all it took. Goff had lots of time to get right under it, settle, and he held on well. Very important blow that for in England. Sad blow for Kenya. 150 for six. being played with the pad at the moment almost as though the uh, pad is the first line of defense rather than that wooden thing well, if they want to get 200 they certainly have to put bat to ball a bit more often than they're doing right now only seven was to go after this that's a good shot Time just well enough to get to the uh, rope. That was a good shot. Think though that Alan Mulali got just a bit carried away, looking to get through the gap between bat and pad, looking to bring the ball back into the right hander. It's not quite necessary at this stage as far as the ball is concerned, but gave the batsman an opportunity of hitting straight down the ground. Flourish to finish the over. Kenya, Kenya starting the uh, the over with a lot of kicking. It's 158 for six. Struck nicely into the gap. Once again, not quite timing it. You perhaps don't need reminding, Michael, but they didn't make 200 uh, when they played against the West Indies in the last World Cup. And it was enough. It was much more than enough. <laughs> I remember that game very well. Small Indian town called Putna. That one struck a bit better very nearly uh, reaching the rope on a long boundary well that's what I was talking about with Odoyo he stays through to the 50th over Kenya will get over 200 England need to get rid of him and of course Kenya do want him to stay that was well hit picked up the length very very quickly Oh, 
Oh, that's struck. That's six. Well back. Oh, that's a good shot. That's the Adoya we have all come to know and love. The first six of the innings and who has it come off? The man that you perhaps least expect, Alan Mulali. Bowled so well in that first game against Sri Lanka at Lords. And that's a big six. Bang. They'll get more than 200 if he stays there to the 50th over, that's for sure. Got to ask yourself now, why is he kicking them when he can hit them like that? And never kick them that far. In fact, it's uh, gone under the stand, I'd say, and they're having a bit of trouble finding it. Umpires have called to the pavilion. Umpires don't want to waste uh, too much time because the game did start late. Well, he's got a boundary. A rather fortunate one, but they uh, all go in the scorebook. That's the nature of this limited over game. Bring the fine leg up, because you think the batsman is going to be hitting straight down the ground. You can have long on and long off right back. And then inside edge goes past that short fine leg for four. Not much you can do about that. Well, the ball finished up in the same spot, but unfortunately for the skipper, this time it came off leg stump. That was an excellent delivery. Tried it again, Mark Elam. That was the delivery he was trying to bowl before when the ball went down to find leg for four. This time it was right on target. The in-swinging Yorker, pitching leg stump. Excellent delivery. Not too many batsmen usually take those out. It's 181 for seven. Still a third man and fine leg on the edge. So hit straight, not middle. High on the bat, I think. Five men in the circle now for uh, Tony Suji. Robert Crofts uh, up at mid off. Just watch out for the uh, reverse in swinging Yorker here. There it is. Is that the one? That was the one. Fine piece of bowling from uh, Darren Goff. Saw Alex Stewart uh, signal to him, is that what you're going to bowl? The only man who perhaps didn't know was the batsman. Suji's uh, short stay is over. Sure, he did, uh, if he'd have known, he could have done a lot about this. It's a good pace and it just darts in late and hits leg stump. Very difficult to get away. And too difficult for Tony Suji. He's gone for four. It's 186 for eight. Oh, it's the best one day shot in the book. And Nick passed the keeper for four. Well, it's a bit like the uh, inside edge that goes to fine leg. Very fine. Thomas Adoya gets time, gets the outside edge. And frustrating for the bowler and captain. And as you say, quite rightly, Paul. Probably the best shot in one day cricket. That's uh, just chipped over mid wicket. Malali uh, running round will field the ball just two to Adoyo. No, well, not quite where he intended. He's got a pretty good eye, this young man. Contest. Where's the in-swing in Yorker? Yeah. Slower ball. And that's well run as well. It's a 200 up for Kenya. It's a good effort. Comes up after 48 uh, and a half overs. Bold. 
got that Yorker working today as Darren Goff, late movement. And right through Mohamed Sheikh's defences. It's a good delivery. It's that full swing in Yorker. This is fourth wicket. Comprehensively beaten Mohamed Sheikh. He's gone for seven. It's 202 for nine. gone that's good cricket from uh, England Rudy Kurtzen gives the run out Thorpe the fielder Martin Suji run out and Kenya all out 203 a little bit of frustration there Thomas Adoya can get the strike they go for the quick single Graham Thorpe does well he knows that Martin Suji is the one that's going to struggle the bowlers end and uh, with a direct hit, you just keep on going. The pavilion's in that direction. Martin nice Suji run out without troubling the scorers. And Kenyon's innings comes to an end with Thomas Adoya left stranded on 34 not out. Maybe they should think about getting that young man a little further up the order. And the team leave the field and... They'll be reasonably happy with that on the balcony. And Thomas Adoya, who looks to me as if he has a bit of raw talent there. He just needs now to find him, but he's got a great eye and he can hit the ball. And it gives him a little bit of a chance. To... It's the story of uh, Kenya's innings. Good performance up at the top of the order by Shah and Ticolo. They put on 100 for uh, the second wicket little uh, wobble in the middle and then a good performance again from Thomas Adoya, 34 not out. 203 all out in 49.4 overs for Kenya. England's bowlers uh, stuck to their task well. I think uh, the bowlers would have expected a little bit more help than actually they got, but uh, Darren Goff the pick, 4 for 34 from his 10 overs and all the others... Uh, Pretty economical, and wickets for everyone bar Alan Mullally. Good stuff from Robert Croft, one for 32 with his 10 overs of offspin. So England need 204 runs to win from their 50 overs at a shade over four runs per over. We'll take. They're requiring 204 for victory at a run rate of just over four as the Kenyans stride out onto the field. Looked as though they were going to post uh, a much bigger total when the 100-run partnership came up between uh, Ravinder Shah and Steve Tocolo. But uh, once Darren Goff came back and split that partnership, things slowed considerably for Kenya. Opening for England, Nasser Hussain getting another opportunity, and he's opening with the skipper, Alex Stewart. Nasser Hussain getting the chance against Sri Lanka ahead of Nick Knight and he's been preferred again. So I guess uh, Ian Botham an opportunity for him to uh, to really press his claim. Yeah and I think he'll be looking to fill his boots as they say in this uh, game. If he can get a 70 or 80 it's going to make it very hard for Nick Knight to get back in the side. And that's a healthy thing. It's something that uh, I'm a great believer in. I think uh, competition is healthy. I think it gets the best out of players. And Nasser is saying the kind of professional he is. I'm very surprised if you don't see a 70, 80 not out here today. Nasser Hussain will be on strike and he'll be uh, facing Martin Suji. Nasser Hussain, who fielded so well, has fielded extremely well in this tournament, fielded very well again today. And uh, Kenya realising that they've got to get early wickets starting with uh, two slip fielders. Alex Stewart, who played so well at Lords in the match against Sri Lanka, was probably uh, a bit stiff not to get a century there. Seemed to get a fairly ordinary decision when it was just a matter of uh, England coasting to victory and Stewart uh, getting his hundred.
So it's going to be uh, Martin Suji. And he'll be coming from the uh, Nackington Road end. He gets the word from KT Francis and we're underway. Very good start there by Suji, right on line and a bit of bounce. How many times a commentator says he thinks he'll fit his boots and get 70 or 80 not out. Almost went first ball. Bounced a little bit more than I think he expected. Played it into the ground. And there wasn't a lot of space between that ball and the off stump. Very close. That's a good shot. First boundary of the innings for England. Nineteen without loss. <laughs> Alex Stewart on ten, NASA Hussein four. So nicely into the gap, and that's going to go for four, even up the hill. I'm not quite sure that Stuart intended to go in the air, as it did. Got a lot of bat on it, flew away. But, uh, I wouldn't like to have seen that go along the deck. I slightly see, thought the ball perhaps was going to come on to him a bit quicker. But he went through the shot, four ends. Short cover has been put in position. And he won't stop that. Absolutely smashed. Well, you have to say, this is a buffet ball. Just help yourself to four runs. Short and wide. Would have been called a wide, I'm sure, if it should and clubbed it away. That's raced away. That's right out of the meat. You don't bother running after those. Inside edge, underneath edge. Four runs. Well, you can't set a feel for this. It's there to hit. It's out there. It wants to be cut. A little inside edge. It flies away. At the end of the day, it'll read four runs in the book. That's way too short, and he's got punished on this occasion. a good shot right on top of it and found the gap doesn't want me bowling that shot at all Thomas Adoyo I've seen a lot of shots going through that square position on the offside for both teams oh well bowled that's a much better length and right on line so Alex Stewart just left a bit of a gap and Thomas Adoyo has gone straight through it This is well bowled. That is a much better length. Alex Stewart caught with both feet inside the batting crease when he should have been forward. Much fuller length, just a bit of movement coming into the right hander, and the gap is found. 45 for one England. to start with it's called a no ball he seems to 
be bowling from a long way back. So that probably suggests that it was the height rather than the front foot. This was the fall of Alex Short. You can see they are both feet inside the batting crease and some way within the batting crease as well. Another thought he would have been much better off going forward. But this is the man Kenya need to get rid of quite quickly. Graham Hick, he's in very good form. Seeming the batting with a lot more assurance these days. Well, that's called a wide. There's some very strange uh, wide calls here today. Seems to me they've almost been caught on the basis that the batsman misses them. Batsman's not being deprived of a shot there. Well, he almost edged it. The ball went over the bat and went over the bat about six inches up the blade of the bat. Yep. Too much at leg stump at the moment. Asif Kareem as the 50 comes up for England. It would have been fine if he was getting the ball to spin. Asif Kareem pitching leg stump and then spinning back towards off. Try to get the batsman to play against the spin. That's a good shot. He's in excellent form, Graham Hick. Excellent placement there from Graham Hick. He didn't try and hit it too hard at all. Just knew with his timing and power that if he got it into the gap, it was away to the rope. Graham Hick, just short of the rope. Not quite off the middle of the bat. I think uh, Graham Hick has another appointment. He wants to be somewhere else uh, later on this afternoon. There's a man out in the deep, but he's at a wide long on. Very close to the tree on the onside. That went straight down the ground. Very safe. All right. 69 for one. England need 131 more for victory. They've comfortably won the battle in the first 15 overs. As uh, Ian Botham joins Paul Allott in the commentary position. It's fine. Will it beat Kurdman? It will. It's four more to Nasser Hussain. England just uh, increasing this run rate now. Well, that's one that you were never going to catch. It's the original despairing dive. Punch through the offside. Just short and uh, a fraction of width on it. And Hussain has got four more. It's 82 for one. England don't lose another wicket they would have to be uh, 69 to win on the Duckworth Lewis uh, scoring method so at uh, 91 for one they're well ahead they can afford to lose uh, another couple of wickets and still be ahead here's Mohammed Sheikh no! I would think that even though uh, it is spitting with rain the umpires will uh, try to finish the game anyway today but uh, at the very least they'll try and get uh, another six overs and five oh. balls and, oh that's an inside edge past uh, off stump he may have missed it altogether there seems to be a little bit of hesitation from the umpire but I'm pretty sure that's four runs by should I say this just goes on with the arm and uh, deceives batsman and wicketkeeper comprehensively. Steve Ticola trying to 
stop the ball. He slides into it and then it hits him. Unfortunate, but four runs. It's a hundred up for England. In the 21st over. the problem for the spinners the ball just uh, slipping out of the out of the grip as uh, they approach the wicket and there's the resultant full toss through the gap on the offside there's nobody out on the uh, square cover boundary and it's through for four 105 for one that's uh, the chest high full toss clubbed away for four and uh, well, it could have been called an O-ball. Oh, they're never the easiest to put away. I'm not quite sure what the ruling is. I used to think that anything above waist high from any bowler was regarded as a wide. We'll check that one out for you. Or should I say no ball? We'll check it out. It's an interesting one. Between bat and pad, quicker ball from uh, Moshik. I think also possibly a miss stumping here. Oh, Graham Hick dragging out there. It's a definite chance. Mm. Very close. Lovely shot, beautifully played by Graham Hick. Just reached and guided that through the covers for four. Great shot. The width has allowed him to get his arms free. Doesn't leave the crease after playing it. He knows it's four runs. Races away. He's bowling to Graham Hick. down the hill for four wasn't timed by Hussain but uh, sped away down the hill despite the fact that uh, this outfield has slowed up considerably beautifully timed yeah, just lent on it beats the inner fielders the inner ring and just races away down the hill
Fighting! Lovely shot. Super stroke from uh, Nasser Hussain. Great way to bring up his 50. And that's as good a shot as been played all day. Timing again, excellent. Just leaning on the ball. And raced away. Oh, misfield. And four. Vindu Shah with the misfield, a super stroke from Graham Hick. Now, everyone at home wants to know how to play cover drive. You won't see it much better than that. We'll not talk about the fielding. In the air and four. Perfectly safe, mid-offs up. And hit with... Uh, Good power from Graham Hick. And he's been looking for this vacant area over the back of the bowler. That's it. Suji coming back into the attack and uh, England really putting the foot on the accelerator pedal now. As I was saying, the mightn't be the brightest of days, but uh, England will be happy to walk away with the uh, two points as the 100 partnership comes up. Yes, the sky has cleared a little in the last 10-15 uh, minutes. There's, well, just patches of uh, brighter light up above us. The clouds have parted, so uh, the light, which could have been a problem, continuing on to around about 8 o'clock, may now be sufficiently good enough to uh, get this match finished tonight. England certainly doing everything to get it over tonight. Both batsmen uh, starting to reach the boundaries pretty regularly. Very good placement from Nasser Hussain. He's extremely strong in that area. Likes to open the blade and drive square of the wicket as the 150 comes up for England. <laughs> A lovely placement again from Nasser Hussain. Hussain is really making the most of this opportunity. I can't say, I guess, that he was presented with it because he made the opportunity for himself by getting some runs. I guess that is after Nick Knight left the door open for him. No one out in the deep on the onside. Heading for the tree. No, we haven't had the pleasure of seeing one hit the tree today. Hussain didn't come into the uh, to the England one day side for a few oh, games into that series and he only got his place in the team because uh, Graham Thorpe went home Thorpe having to uh, have a sore back fixed up as Graham Hick brings up his 50 22nd half century for Graham Hick five centuries three of those coming in the Carlton United series played in Australia in the last summer Before. 
Kenya have kept the field up. They've been looking for wickets. But uh, it's also provided opportunity for a few boundaries. As if Kareem obviously realizes that it's just a matter of delaying the inevitable if he spreads the field. The bowlers aren't penetrative enough. So he has tried to keep as many as possible inside the circle, looking for a lofty drive or a mistimed pull that might go to hand. So far, Nasser Hussein and Graham Hick have played splendidly. That'll go further, way over the fence. run partnership and what a way to bring it up that was well struck he was coming forward there Nasser Hussain just transferred the weight onto his back foot and the way it went not quite the right pace to be bowling short Thomas Adoya Scores level. Nasser Hussain has got the opportunity now to get off 87. If he was an Australian player, he'd be doing everything possible to make sure that he got a single off this ball. Could be a leg by. And he's given it an edge, so he's off the 87. Nasser Hussain has seen uh, England home to victory with some help from Graham Hick. So England now have four points from two matches, having defeated Sri Lanka and now Kenya here at uh, Canterbury. Good performance from England, spearheaded by Darren Goff at a stage when Kenya were. Uh, we're looking dangerous. Darren Goff came back and uh, got a couple of wickets and that really stopped uh, Kenya in their tracks. The man out, Alex Stewart, bowled uh, Adoy for 23 from 26 doesn't look to be despite having got over 100 runs in two innings in this competition doesn't look to be uh, totally at ease yet at the crease Alex Stewart the runs coming off 39 overs so uh, that won't do the net run rate situation any harm at all for England Martin Suji took a bit of a pounding nine overs for 46 and Adoy also uh, paying heavily for his wicket one for 65 from 10 overs. So Australia, as England, I beg your pardon, defeating Kenya by nine wickets and with 11 overs in hand.